Hi Rockridge, this is Mrs. Sperger, and today we're going to talk about transformation of graphs. Um, and certainly we have been transforming graphs for the last couple of days, and actually even before then. So hopefully a lot of this is review. But let's take a look here at some of our notes that we're filling in. Transformations, any transformation can include a change to a graph's size, its shape, its position, or its orientation. Okay, so we have already seen this in action. We have been shifting things left and right for position changes, um, and we have, we have seen them uh, flipped upside down, we've seen them widen and stretch. So we're going to dig deep into not necessarily the left and right shifts for right now, but really going to dig deep into this, um, the factor of A. So remember back um, when we were talking about absolute values, uh, for instance, that was the first one we talked about. Um, this was obviously left, right. This was up, down. And this A factor, we kind of treated like a slope. But when we got into things like y equals A times the square root of x minus h plus k, this, this concept of slope got a little murky. Okay, So let's dig into exactly how this plays out and use more sophisticated terms other than slope. When this A, regardless of what kind of function you have, when this A is a value that is bigger than 1, and what I mean by that is it can be a 2 or a 3 or a negative 2 or a negative 3. When it's a big number like that, that means it's going to stretch the graph from its parent as compared to its parent, or make the graph narrower from its parent as compared to its parent. On the other hand, if the value of A is less than 1, so we're talking 1 half, a third, a fourth, or negative a half, negative a third, negative a fourth. If A is any of those values, that's going to result in the graph being compressed or widened as compared to its parent function. Okay? It's going to be wider than its parent function. And when a, uh, a value of A is negative, you've already seen this, right? The graph is a horizontal reflection or a flip. Okay, and you've seen that. Whenever you see um, an absolute value graph like that, that's the parent function. When A is negative, you watched it flip right, right upside down. Okay, the same thing happened with our um, square root function. When A was negative, it flipped upside down, right? And, and more technically, it reflected, it was a horizontal reflection, okay? So let's watch this play out. We're going to take a look at this graph right here, y equals square root of x. Hopefully you see this algebra here and you're uh, automatically thinking, that's a graph that looks like this. The parent graph of that looks like that. Um, we definitely need to be at that level here, uh, if not right now, really, really soon, so that when you see the algebra, you immediately think what the graph looks like um, visually. So obviously, uh, this guy is unshifted, unswitched, unflipped, unreflected, any of that stuff. The parent graph of this looks like this. Right? Its center is there. That is the parent function. That's just a little reference point for us. So let's look at the children here. Let's look at the child here. Let's first look here. There is a shift left 1, right? That's what that number right there, that's what the H means. We have a vertical stretch. I'll put that in pink. This right here is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And there is a shift down 1. Those are the three things that are happening in that child. Okay? So we are going to take this, and we're going to take mama graph and shift left 1, stretch it by 2, and down 1 for each of those points. Left 1, stretch it by 2, down 1. And then our mama point of 4, 2 will be shifted left 1, stretched by 2, and shifted down 1. Okay? 
If you are not a person who likes to memorize points, you are more than welcome to put values in for x and see how they play out, okay? So if you want to confirm this point here, to confirm this point here, I'm claiming that 3 comma 3 is on this, based on this um, shifting here. 3 comma 3. Let's confirm that with algebra. If we put it a value of 3 in for x, let's do that here. If we algebraically put a value of 3 in for x, what kind of y output will we get? Well, 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's why an input of 3 gives us an output of 3, and that's why 3 comma 3 is on that graph, okay? So if you are not a, I want to memorize these three points on the parent graph here, memorize those and follow these shifting things, you are more than welcome to just uh, choose some values to the right of that starting point and, and put those in to fill out the graph. All right, so let's get back to here. Now, we're going to ignore everything that happened in 2, and we're going to take a look at child number 3 here and compare it to the parent graph. So the first thing we're doing is we are shifting right, say it with me, right 1. We are doing a vertical, what is this guy telling us here? It's telling us two things, actually. There's two little steps to this one. It's a vertical compression by a factor of a half. It is a reflection negative, and we are going to, let's choose blue here, we're going to, oops, that was pink, There's blue, we are going to shift, say it with me, up two, all right, so again, we'll go look at mammograph, and remember where we started, we started here at zero, zero, we're going to go right one, Vertical compress that by a factor of a half, reflect it, and shift up two. Then we're going to take the next point, so that was the zero, zero reflection. We're going to take the next point of one, one. We're going to shift right one. We're going to vertical compress by a half. We're going to reflect, and we're going to shift up two. And we can do it again for four comma two. We can go over to the original point of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. We can shift right 1, vertical compress by a half, reflect, and shift up 2. And if you don't believe me that those points are on there, we can do it with algebra. Or if you don't like memorizing that and doing that method, you can always say, well, I know that I'm going to shift right I know that I'm going to shift right 1 up 2. That's easy enough. I know that I'm going to shift this ver oh, sorry. We're going to shift this vertex uh, right 1 up 2. So that's that I got. But going figuring out these points over here, that's not my thing. I, I don't love memorizing the original ones. You can certainly say, all right, well, let me go over here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me input a value of 5 for x and see what happens. And I apologize for how bright this is. Let's try, let's try something a little cleaner here. Let's do orange. So let's put an input of 5 in for x, just to see what it uh, plays out as for a y value. So that's 1 negative 1 half times the square root of 5 minus 1 is 4 plus 2. That's negative 1 half times the square root of 4, which is, of course, 2, plus 2. It's negative 1 half times 2. That's negative 1 plus 2. That, of course, is 1. So that's why the point 5 comma 1 is on this graph. And of course, you can smooth that graph out once you have that information. And yes, of course, absolutely, you can put this into your calculator and ask, hey, table of values, can you give me some table of values so that I can clean up this graph on my hand-drawn graph? Absolutely. So those are three methods that you can do, right? You can um, memorize your parent points over here and watch how they shift and compress and reflect and shift again. Uh, you can put this into your calculator and see how those points play out. 
or you can uh, get your first point graphed and then pick uh, x values to the right of it and input it into the original function for x to see what the y's play out. Okay, so any of those methods is completely fine. Let's take a look at the next couple here. We'll go a little bit quicker here. Um, all of these graphs, 4, 5, and 6, are all the same form. Hopefully you look at this algebra and you immediately think, I know what those are. Those are quadratics that look like this. Okay, And those quadratics that look like this are all, uh, the parent graph starts at 0, 0. The vertex is 0, 0. And so let's walk through what all these, um, sh the translations are going to play out as. So obviously this one right here is a shift, say it with me, shift left one. We talk here about a vertical stretch by a factor of two. And then we talk about, oh, there actually is nothing out here for k. So there's nothing going on out here for a horizontal, or a, a vertical shift. So that's fairly straightforward. We can talk to Mama Graph here and we say, all right, Mama Graph, zero, zero is here. I'm going to go ahead and shift you left one. And that's all I'm going to need to do for you. That's all I'm going to need to do for shifting. And then typically, I go over 1 to 1 comma 1. I go back 1 to negative 1 comma 1. So my parent graph has those points on there. But instead, I'm lengthening this. So I'm making it skinnier. So I need a vertically stretched or narrowed version of that parabola. Now, I'm not going to go through inputting these values, right? So definitely, if you don't believe me that 0 comma 2 is on this graph, you can put 0 in for x and calculate it out. You could have memorized that 1, 1 was on the original and done your shift left stretch by 2 to come up with that. Um, but either way, we're going we're gonna to see a skinnyed graph that's been uh, shifted left by 1. Uh, let's look at this mammoth next one here. So still the same parent graph, still a parabola. We're going to say it with me, shift left 1 we are going to vertically stretch, vertical stretch by a factor of 3. We are going to reflect. And we are going to shift down 4. I'm going to use paint, sorry about that. Usually blue for this part. Blue, come here. Shift up four. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at how that plays out on the graph. So now that we've documented what's actually going to happen, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Left one up one two three four, but it's upside down. So there's my vertex now. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Got ahead of myself here. Left one, up one, two, three, four. Sorry, there's my vertex. Got ahead of myself. I am stretching this by three, and I am flipping it upside down. So it's even skinnier than the first one. So the first one was skinny, but this one's super skinny. Okay. So that's what that's going to look like. Notice that it is upside down because of the negative. It's stretched by three, so it's even skinnier than the first one. If you need to pause, and if your method is to make a table of values, or if you need to pause and take a look at your calculator to pull a uh, set of values, or if you need to pause and take a look at the original um, points on the parent graph and run through each of these steps, um, please do so. Get comfortable with this so that when you do it on the quiz, you are ready to go. All right, on this last graph, the first thing we're going to do is, say it with me, shift left 2, then we are going to vertical compress by a factor of a half, and finally, and we're not doing any reflection because that's positive, and then finally we are going to shift, say it with me, down all right, 
So, Mama Graph, you sit at zero, zero. I'm going to go left, two, down, one, two, three. That's your starting point. And you are wider, so you're going to look like that. Okay? All right. Now, all of those steps, obviously, we have our calculator to fall back on. We have inputting values um, into the algebra to fall back on, but we don't always have that to fall back on for these translations, transformations. So when we transform these graphs, I love Incredible Hulk here, transforming. Let's remind ourselves, if we are presented with stuff that looks like this, it's not necessarily something we can put in our calculator. Let's remind ourselves what happens when we do this. Stretching or shrinking. If the value of A is greater than 1, it is stretching. If that value is less than 1, we are um, compressing. Reflecting means we are, um, if we have an A that is negative, or A is less than 0 is another way to say that. And of course, we are shifting horizontally, h units, and vertically, k units. Okay, so that's just a summary of everything. And we are all going to use those rules on things that do not look like the graphs that we can put in our calculator. Stuff that looks like this. So to do these types of translations, if someone asks you to translate or transform this, we have to pull points off and transform each one individually, which sounds a lot less fun than it actually is. I think it's actually pretty fun. Now, I'm going to help you try to clean this up so that it's not quite so terrible. I know that these aren't going through these points exactly, but for purposes of teaching this, let's go ahead and say that these are the points that these go through. Okay? And I'm pulling these points because between this point here, let's call him A, and this point here, let's call it B, and this point here, these are the places that can kind of guide me. If I was to translate A and then B and then C and then D and then connect them the way that they were originally connected, that will help me uh, keep myself in order to make sure that this thing looks uh, appropriate. So A is negative 8, 2. B is negative 1, negative 3. C is 2, comma 3. We're going to make it that way. And D is 4, comma 1. So because of that, when we are asked to transform, and I just copied those points here just so I wouldn't have to flip back and forth. When we're asked this question, we know what we can do, right? What does this question normally mean? If you have, a, if you have this going on in here, what does that normally mean? What that normally means is left 2. We know that, right? So we're going to take each one of those points and shift them left 2 and then connect them. Now, I highly recommend, highly recommend, read the points left to right, connect the points in order after you translate them, okay? In order. Please do not, like, pull A and then pull C and then pull B. Like, it's just, it's just fraught with peril. Every time you don't pull them off in order, you start connecting them in weird ways, and you're like, why does this not look anything like the original graph? So pull them off in order, okay? So I'm going to do these. Like I said, this was uh, this is A, B, C, and D. I am going to plot them and connect them right in that same order. So negative 8, 2 used to be here, but I need to go left 2, so the new one is here. Negative 1, negative 3 was here, but I need to go left 2, so the new one is here. Now that I've plotted that, I am going to connect it immediately. 2, comma, 3 was on the original, but it needs to move left 2, so now it's here. And that was the top of a parabola. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 1 was the original. It needs to move left 2, so it's here. And remember, in the original graph, it was like the parabola coming through it and then going on forever. Okay? So if you compare that to the original, it has been shifted left 2. All right, forget what you just did on that one and go to the next one and think fresh. This one, what does this mean? That's a k value. There's no left right going on in here. Nothing. It's just staying, the x value is staying where it is. But we are going to go down 5. So we need to shift this graph down 5. 
Once again, I recommend going A, B, C, D in order and connecting as you go along. Let's go to the original negative 8, comma 2 and go down 5, plot your point. Go negative 1, negative 3, highlight that one, go down 5, plot your point, connect your point immediately. Probably a little bit better than I just did, sorry about that. 2, comma 3, take a look at that guy, and let's move him down 5, and remember that was the top of the parabola. And then our last one, 4, comma 1, move that down 5. That's the guy that we go through, oops, sorry, curve that around a little bit. Go through and then we go on forever like that, okay? Now, that is a single set of, that's translations, uh, doing one thing at a time, right? Doing one thing at a time. We're going to kick it up a notch here and get a little fancier. Now, once again, I have copied my points here, A, B, C, and D, to help myself along. But now we're doing two translations at once. Check this out. I am going right one, and I am stretching by two. Now, the stretch by two happens only with the y value, okay, so keep that in mind. So let's go negative eight two, that's where you were originally. I'm going to go right one, that's where you are now. And I'm going to take this y value right now that's sitting at a two and stretch it. Stretch it up. So what was a 2 is now a 4. Then I'm going to go negative 1, negative 3. You're sitting right here. i got to move you right 1. You're sitting right there. Then i got to stretch you by a factor of 2. Currently sitting at a y value of negative 3. If I'm going to stretch negative 3 by a factor of 2, I'm going to go all the way down to negative 6. That's a stretch. Okay. Connect the points immediately. Highly recommend. Sorry about that highly recommend connecting these points immediately, okay? All right, let's head to the next one. 2 comma 1, 2, 3, that's where we were originally. We gotta move you right 1, and we gotta say, hey, I'm sitting at positive 3 right now from a y perspective. I gotta stretch your y by 2, so that's gonna put me up at positive 6. Now remember, that wasn't a straight line to there on the original graph. That was the tippy top of a parabola, and that parabola is a little bit skinnier than it used to be, right? Because it was stretched. And then that 4 comma 1 was the original. We're going to move it to the right one. And then this y value of positive 1 needs to be stretched to a y value of positive 2. So that's our last point that we decided to transform. And of course there's an arrow on the end of it. And hopefully that looks to you like the original graph that has been shifted right 1 and stretched by 2. All right, now the ultimate test of your abilities. Let's take a look here. We are doing all kinds of things. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. Let's write down what that is. We are shifting right three. We are reflecting. And we are shifting up two. So let's hit it. Negative eight, negative two. That's my original. Go right three. One, two, three. Now my new one. Now I'm reflecting. If I'm at negative two, I'm sorry. If I'm at positive two now, I'm at negative two later, and then I got to go up two. Okay. That went too fast. Go ahead and take a look. Uh, pause for a second and make sure that you're you're full with that. That's point A. Point B. Negative one. Negative one. Two. Three. That's where I was originally. Shift right three. One. Two. Three. That's where I'm in right now. Reflect. So if I'm at negative 3 right now, I need to be at positive 3 up here. Now shift up to 1, 2. Highly recommend you connect them right now. Uh, so I got A and B. Now let's hit C. C was originally at 2, 3, right there. Reflect, uh, sorry, shift right 3. 1, 2, 3. Now I'm sitting here. Reflect. If I'm at positive 3 now, I need to be at negative 3 right there and then I need to shift up to. So there's my final. And remember that guy is supposed to be sort of the vertex of my parabola. Okay, so that needs to be curving down like that guy. And remember that reflection basically means we flipped it upside down. Okay. All right, last one. 
4 comma 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 comma 1. There's where I was originally. Write 3. 1, 2, 3. Reflect. If I'm at positive 1 here, I go to negative 1 here. Then shift up to 1, 2. There's my final. So this was C. There's my final D. And again, i got to go like that. Okay, so hopefully that looks to you like the original graph has been shifted right, has been reflected, and has been shifted up to. Phew, that was tough. All right, so just keep your order there straight in your head, and you should be fine. All right, let's go back to something super comfortable, stuff that we've been doing for so long, taking a picture and making the algebra. We're going to make this a y equals, so we're going to try to figure out what the original algebra was to create this graph. Hopefully, when you see these v's, you are so ready to say, oh, I know what that is, Mrs. Berger. That is absolute value of x of some kind. And I know that the vertex is at 0, 0, and it appears that that has not shifted at all. So because it hasn't shifted at all, and you do not have to write this, but just for our reference sake, because it hasn't shifted at all, that h and k are still 0. So you don't have to write that plus 0, but just for our reference, we do need to check for that each time. And then from an a value perspective, it looks like we went up 1 over 1, 2, 3. So it looks like we've got a compression factor of 1 third. Why did I not make that negative a third? Well, because it's not upside down. You already knew that, didn't you? All right, let's take a look at this next one. We write our skeleton. We take a look at that vertex first and foremost and say, hey, what's going on with it? It looks like it's 0, 0 still, so there's nothing to be put inside that absolute value at all. I just need to check for my a value. And my a value appears to be a down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2 scenario. So because I said down, I'm going to write negative. And because I said 3 over 2, I'm going to put negative 3 halves. And if you would like to make this look a little prettier by putting this line closer to the x. I am totally fine with that. Let's kick it up a notch. Let's take a look at things that are not absolute values. Hopefully you remember what the parent function of this is. It is y equals x squared. So that means my skeleton looks like that. Now, please, please, please remember that 2. If you don't put that power of 2 there, you're not talking about a parabola. You're talking about a line. So on your quiz, if you've been faced with a parabola, you need to be putting that power of 2 there. Okay, You need to be putting that power of 2 right up as the um, outside this this parentheses. All right, let's go ahead and document the vertex, because we know that is a super important point, right? This is what I highly recommend you do. I highly recommend you write, hey, that right there is a negative 2, negative 3. Because when you put this down here, what do you have to do? You have to do some changing, right? You have to make this a plus 2, minus 3. So that's why I highly recommend documenting it here. Document it here for yourself so you know what it is, and then you can make that change down here. Because a lot of times we try to flip negatives in our heads, and we overflip or we underflip, or who knows what goes on inside our head. So I highly recommend you document that vertex. And then it appears like we have a pretty basic a value. I'm going to write it in. You don't have to. But that's a positive 1 a value because we've not been compressed or stretched and we have not been reflected. All right, once again, we are faced with a gorgeous parabola. And so our skeleton looks like this of some kind. Highly recommend you document what the coordinate of that vertex is, and it appears to be a 1, 2. So that when you come down here, you know that that turns into a minus 1 plus 2. And then it looks like we've been vertically stretched and we have been reflected. So let's say reflected means negative, and it appears to be a stretch of positive 2. All right, last couple here of taking the graphs and turning them into algebra. This guy is our friend that we have seen a couple times today. Hopefully you see that this is one of these, square root of x. Let's see which kind it is. So let's give ourselves a little template here to fill in. Once again, highly recommend you document the coordinates here. That appears to be a negative 1, negative 2. Highly recommend you document it, that there so that down here, you know that this turns into a plus 1, 
and this stays a negative 2. And then since this guy is acting like he's supposed to, there's a little invisible 1 out front. You don't have to write that, but just want to make sure that you address the fact that it looks like it's normal version of itself, the parent function. That's a plus 1. It hasn't been stretched, compressed, or reflected. All right, last one. Take a look at this one. I'll give you a minute to think. What is it? What's the parent graph of that thing? What's the parent graph? Think about it. Hopefully you said cube root of x. That's the parent. So that means our template, our little skeleton, is going to look like this. Cube root of x of some kind. Starting points of cube roots are these little inflection points there. Coordinate this time is 0, negative 2. So that means down here, and you don't have to write plus 0. I'm just going to do it just so I can have a placeholder here. You're going to have a negative 2 out here. And then take a look at this guy and compare him to a regular old cube root of x un, untransformed. What's going on with that, with, with the a value? Hopefully you see that a value must have been a negative 1. And if you just want to write a negative on your quiz, that's fine. But a negative 1 has been put out front here because it has been reflected. It has been reflected. Okay? All right. Hopefully that was a good explanation for you. If it went any, th any of that went too fast, please replay it. Uh, make sure that you do attempt your homework. That is super crucial. And good luck on your quiz.